That extra second was just to piss Eagle off. We are back. Uh, we have Ex Alouette, current TSN employee, Marco Royette, joining us. How's it going, Marco? Uh, very well. Just need to clarify. I'm a freelancer. No employer-employee relationship. They can't hold me down. So they can do. They fired you. <laughs> just straight up. You know what? That means you're free to work for Hot Sauce Sports. Exactly. Just because saying. now you're, you're not going to be working for them. Well... I mean, not in the foreseeable future, uh, all because of Randy Ambrosi. Your boy. So Marco, um, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, he uh, he put his name up for uh, to be the commissioner of the CFL. Awesome. On Twitter, which is f- official. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's where most election- elections are held anyway, right? Exactly. As far as I know. So, so Marco, we like to play commissioner for a day. Yeah. So for you, it's commissioner for life, right? <laughs> Listen... It- it would be a privilege for me to act as commissioner of the CFL. Unfortunately, I don't think the board of governors and owners would be interested in having a a pro player commissioner. I think that's bad right. for business on their end. So I think it's a little bit more wishful thinking than everything. But, hey, you know, I'm not hard to find. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Grinder, whatever you want. Mm. <laughs> I've often visited your profile yes, on Grinder, Grindr almost as well. much – as I visited your, your Carabane photo uh, when you played for the uh, University of Montreal Carabane. Which we have on screen right now for yeah. everybody to see. Fun fact for you guys, most visited profile in Carabane website. <laughs> Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. <laughs> Smoke show right there. Smoke I mean, show. He was a pretty man back in the day. Yeah. If Tinder existed when you were young, you would have picked up so many girls with this picture. No, Marco was a taken man at the time. Oh, my God. That, From back the then. Question. Jeez. Uh, um, Marco, going back to the, the, the uh, pseudo-serious commissioner campaign, it's not a terrible idea. You are a lawyer, which is something they look for in league commissioners. Um, you are Canadian, which is important for the CFL because... Yes. You speak um, both languages. Americans don't want to earn Canadian dollars. And um, on top of that, I mean, you, you are pro player, but have you ever thought of doing the A-Rod turn, just yeah. stabbing everyone in the back? Yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems to be working out for him. I, feel I know, like right? Like this thing going on, you know. He's, <laughs> He's not, not a like freelancer. To, uh, figured out. But I mean, l- listen. There was a lot of excitement and enthusiasm when Randy Ambrosi was first named commissioner, especially given the fact, you know, that that he used to be a player. But the issue is, I think he was so far removed from the game uh, that it didn't really matter. You know, he wasn't in touch with what was going on in locker rooms. He wasn't in touch with the realities. Uh, that the players nowadays are facing across the league, whether they be Canadian or American. And I think that the CFL is a business model that compared to other professional sports would thrive if both the teams and the players uh, work together and, and cooperate and were on the same page as opposed to being viewed as as opponents, you know, and and I understand in the context of labor negotiations and the CBA, there's going to be some back and forth. Uh, But I really think that in order for the league to be successful, uh, everybody needs to be on the same page. And I think one way to do that uh, is to explore revenue sharing between players and, and the league, because now you've got players who actually have some skin in the game, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we've seen that we've seen that success in the NBA. I mean, it's just like players put in. You know, the players will put in a lot more if they know that they're getting a piece of the pie. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. And I, I think I think there are a lot of changes as well that can be made as far as uh, how the American players are treated. You know, right now a lot of those American guys strictly see the CFL as a stepping stone, and then you have you know these one year contracts where it's hard. For teams to build continuity in the roster, there's just so much turnover from year to year. You know, uh, uh, the average guy, and, and I mean, I'm just pulling stats on my ass here, yeah. but I would imagine that the average American or Canadian that, put, that has a seven or eight year, you know, CFL career probably plays for a minimum of three to four teams. Now, in a nine team league, they, you know, those are great numbers. Yeah. It's a good point. I mean, when you have. You, there, there's, it's kind of like there's a little bit no stability, right, Mark? Absolutely. You, you know, you you want teams to have guys around so they can develop, so they can have their core guys. I mean, you look at the success of the Alouette. 
you know, in the early 2000s and, and the rest of that era, you look at that team, they had continuity at almost every single position. And that's one of the reasons, I mean, they were a talented team, you know, no doubt. Yeah, of course. Um, but I think that played into it, that played into it. And that was a major part of their success for so many years. Mark, the, uh, the CFL uh, went ahead and canceled their season uh, due to the pandemic. Um, do you think this is related to teams trying to uh, control costs with, no- with nothing to earn at the gate? Um, and how do you think this bodes for the future of the CFL? Well, there are several different factors that play into that. I think one uh, of the biggest ones is the fact that you have community-owned teams and you also have privately-owned teams. Now, the privately-owned teams are the ones that aren't very profitable. You know, you're thinking of Toronto, uh, Montreal, uh, BC, uh, I mean, Hamilton's in, in decent financial shape, but you know, I feel like there wasn't much of an urgency for those teams to want to play this season, especially given the fact that, like you mentioned, it is such a gate-driven league. Yeah. And regardless uh, if they play games or not, if they couldn't have fans in the stands, you know, the, the TV revenue wasn't enough. But I do still believe that, you know, either way there would have been losses. Teams would have been incurring losses. But when you have a, a community-owned team, I, I think it's much easier to digest uh, those losses as opposed to a private team uh, where really now you're going into the, you know, you're going directly into the owner's pockets. And a lot of these guys are, are, are businessmen who, you know, they learn to not make decisions, especially business decisions based on emotion. And, and so I, I feel like there was some pressure with, you know, within closed doors from those teams, from those privately owned teams, um, to not move forward with the proposed plan, because I'm convinced that if all it took was $30 million from the federal government to get this up and running, uh, there was enough money sitting around that, that table when they had the owners meeting uh, to pitch in and come up with that $30, $30 million, regardless if, of if they got federal uh, government aid or not. So, I mean, so obviously we, we joked around about you being the commissioner, but I mean, if it's a possibility, it's a possibility. But wouldn't it be... Uh, almost to the owner's benefit to have a maybe a, a former player uh, in there. I know you you've been a player rep, so I mean, you, well, are you still are you still work for the C- CFLPA? Or are you still on on board? Uh, I, I mean, unofficially, uh, I, I do speak to them and, and consult with them uh, on different issues, um, but I'm still very close with with the leaders over there, especially uh, Brian Ramsey, uh, who's been the executive director for several years now. Uh, John Bowman, one of my very close friends, yeah. and recently uh, voted in as a as a vice president. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah. Good so, I mean, the union's in great shape. I, I think what really needs work is the relationship between the players and the teams. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, I, I think we need not only a former player, but a, a recently – you know, retired player, somebody who's still in touch, somebody who still has the pulse uh, of the walkers who understand what's actually important to uh, to these guys and, and really understand, you know, what's going on across the locker in the league. Marco, um, just to take things in a lighter direction for a second, um, you've heard of a shout-out, right? You yeah. know what a shout-out is? I sure have. Yeah, so um, we have an intern. He, uh, he says he's a big <laughs> fan of you, and he uh, remembers seeing you play quarterback, and he remembers you from your time at the Catabang. But because he's our intern, you can't give him a shout-out. You have to give him a shout-down. Yeah, you got to so tell him how worthy he is. I need you is. to tell him how unworthy he is of your existence. Wow. Yes. An in- intern, that's the lowest level of stuff. It is. Absolutely. I think, I think- I think that's even worse than a rookie. I mean, or at least a rookie's getting paid, you know. He might be carrying your jock around, and you might tape him to the goalpost and give him a golden shower after a hot two-a-day. Yeah. Uh, but at least, you know, but at it's least... It's lower than that. Paid. Lower than a golden shower on a hot day. A golden shower. <laughs> it's like, it's straight up just 
everything, his whole existence is just straight swamp ass. Yeah, everything yeah. we can think of that involves swamp ass. I mean, he works hard, life. but we don't want him. We don't want him to know. Well, yeah, we don't want him to know that we appreciate him. So we need yeah. to shout him down at all turns. So, yeah. so what would you tell him to remind him his that name, he's not worthy of your presence? His name is Alex. Yeah, Alex, the intern. We like oh. to call him. Gosh, Alex, I don't even want you hearing my voice right now. I want you to go home. I want you to go into the wastebasket in your bathroom, fish out the bloodiest tampon you can find, and mm. shove it in your ears so you mm. don't listen to my voice anymore because you're not worthy of it. That's perfect. That's, that's, that's perfect. perfect. We're going to make sure we clip that and send it yes, to him yes, so he can send it out on the internet. I'm going to set it so every morning he gets it as like his alarm. Mm. That'll be his alarm. <laughs> Imagine how worthless you would feel <laughs> if every morning you heard that. Pepped off from Marco. Holy fuck. Yeah. Mike, Marco, you should sell that, man. Imagine like the, you like well, those CEOs that like to be like uh, like punished. Mm-hmm. They like to be like kicked down because they're too powerful. But in their you know their shitty lives, they like to be uh, disrespected. You should like sell it to those guys. Yeah, they like they like having their scrotum stomped on yeah. six inch heels. Like those stupid videos I send you guys all the time in our group chat. <laughs> but you listen, know what you could actually listen. do? You can have a cameo account and actually record personalized messages for people where oh, you just wow. insult the fuck out of them. Oh, yeah, shoot. I did that. I, I got can't. ten. I paid 20 bucks for Goldberg, the, the Mike Goldberg, the, rest, the UFC announcer. The way you spend your money is bizarre to me. Too. No, I did. It was my, my – it was uh, – there's two brothers. It was, it was classic. It was two brothers. Our, our Marco and I, <laughs> their, their names are the Eric and Mark, and they, uh, I sent them like to go fuck themselves and fuck their mother basically. Mm-hmm. What if, what if we funny. do this? Marco, would you be in to help us fund a new hot sauce venture? It's called, it's, it's a playoff cameo. It's called Ripio, where basically wow. people pay you, pay celebrities to rip into them. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I like the sound of that. I'm interested on getting on the ground floor on that one. I First mean, good investor. Thing you're a, good thing you're a investor. Partner. He's a lawyer. It's we got, true. Yeah, oh, my knows, God. We need that. He knows how to read. <laughs> <laughs> we need one of those. We need one yeah. person who knows how to read. Yeah, one guy. So Marco, what, I need what, some what, equity. What, I, I need some skin in the game, boy. What do you What do you have planned the rest of the night, the rest of the week? You want to play golf? I know you. Uh, you're scared of me on the on the links. <laughs> I know that for sure. Oh gosh, it's too bad. You know, I got this dog shit thing called a job that I got to deal with. <laughs> mm. Very unfortunate. Really Very in my unfortunate. life, really. <laughs> but here's the here's the good news. It does afford me the luxury of taking a sweet underpantless stroll on this beautiful midsummer night. I Down to it. the Coos Chart on the corner of De La Montagne and Notre Dame West. Oh, I'm going to slide my mask on. Might be a little muffled as I walk in there. <laughs> Speaking of the mask, not the muff. Mm. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to grab a nice 15-pack of crisp, refreshing Michelob Ultra. That's what I do. Oh, I'm an athlete, pack. but I like I'm to an, drink beer. you so got to get paps. You gotta get, if you're an athlete, you got to get paps. I mean, so many calories. Well, PBR, right? man. PBR. you got to really blow it up. Carbs, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I will say, because this is to be a weird scenario, Marco, that you're actually covering your face more than your junk. Yeah. The first time ever. <laughs> that is true. I should have brought two masks. It's <laughs> <laughs> a balls mask. Maybe. So I got to ask, I got to ask, on days you're not going commando, do you, are you like a briefs guy, box guy? Do you have the boxers with the balls pocket? Like, is that your thing? Like the sacks kind that hold your nuts? Marco's like a compression shorts guy all the time. I see, I see. <laughs> I, I am a full underwear, Calvin Klein, just real, real banana hammock, you know, nice, tight and snug. No, no boxer sports because they roll up on the underside, you know? Fair enough. Fair I enough. have to wear boxes or, or my legs rub together and they, then I really get thunder thighs. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, yeah. it's the worst. Which leg are you talking about there, Tierra, the old thunder sticks? <laughs> Yeah, the, the the second leg is rubbing against the third leg. The the the, the thunder stick rubs off on both legs, <laughs> chafing both legs. It's terrible. Exactly, there's all kinds. Of then chafing. you gotta just lean on 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 the middle on the mid piece. That's it. I just uh, at like all a times. tripod at all times. Yeah, Marco, thank yeah, you for joining us. Uh, so hope to have you in our lineup soon. Maybe we'll get uh, Marco Red Show mob mentality. Oh, M-O-B. oh, oh, mob mentality. Mob I mentality. Like I like it. I like I like the M O B Bukaki corner as well. The Briet Bukaki corner. There we go. That's uh, a good one too. We can we can we can break down porn. Yeah. Oh, we there we go. I like that. Well, no, no, we, we don't break it down. We review it like we yeah break like it game down. Tape. Like, yeah, the like game tape. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we look X, at the porn. X's and O's kind of thing. You Absolutely. Know? First ever game tape on on porn. Do Level you think of this makes you more or less qualified to be commissioner for this year. <laughs> <laughs> I think I reach a broader audience, especially we if we review <laughs> a very diverse range 
of pornography, then we can really attract some new fans in this league. It's 2020. You got to be sex positive. That's it. You got to be open. I mean, yeah. any any closed any closed minded people in 2020 canceled. You don't want to halftime show. New evolution of the the whole break. I don't, know, I don't know what he's talking Don't about. know where you're going with that, Eagle. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> Thanks, Marco. We appreciate it, buddy. Talk uh, to you soon, bud. Talk to you soon. I love you. All right, boys. Alex, second fat one. Yeah. <laughs>